foundation. I'm not sure where he went, but um, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, and also Devin Nunes and Tom McClintock and all of you for being here. Uh, this is a very important forum for us, and uh, I hope you realize how important. Um, one of the things that I want to bring into question is, under the biological opinion, there's two things. Is it constitutional, and does it re meet reasonable and prudent measures? And I will tell you here today, just looking at this crowd, it does not meet reasonable and prudent measures, because if it was reasonable and prudent, we wouldn't be sitting here. Um, and if it was constitutional, uh, that's another question that really needs to be looked at, because I'm not sure that it is. I'm not convinced. Um, so please, talk to people um, in Washington. Please make your plea, because we're trying to make our plea here, and no one seems to be listening to us. And it's getting to a point of critical mass, so please. My name is Lisa, and um, I um, grew up on the west side, but uh, it seems like this man-made man drought has turned the farmer into the fall guy. I mean, when you really think about it, our population in California has increased immensely, but our leadership hasn't done anything to take care of infrastructure to keep up with it. So, um, you know, I guess what that means is we need to get rid of the leadership that's, that's making these decisions. And um, I have a question for a farmer, and I think Mr. Upton is a farmer. Um, and I just wonder, with this 19th Congressional District, this chair, the seat that's available, um, there's, a, there's a few people out there running for this um, seat, and you know, who supports the farmer, who backs him up, and actually, who do you support? Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Let me get your first name and last name, please. I'm Bob Dietrich. Okay, spelling on the first and last. Um, B-O-B-D-I-E-D-R-I-C-H. Uh, -E and you are a grower? Farmer. A farmer. Okay, yes. where, what do you grow and, and where? Um, I grow uh, tomatoes, processing tomatoes, cotton, beans, um, anything that will grow. Where? I don't know, in uh, Western Water District. Okay, specifically. And San Luis Water District. Okay, so that's on the west end of Yes, west side. Okay, first of all, how frustrating is the situation as a farmer? Well, here it is. It's, it's, it's been a year now since uh, we started this, and uh, it just, it just, it's the same thing. You hear the same thing all the time now. It's just, you know, a year later, well, basically it's been 20 years. We've been hearing the same thing for 20 years, and, and uh, since last year, we've heard the same thing over and over again that they're going to help. They're trying to help, and they're trying to do this and trying to do that, but um, it just, like you said, it's frustrating because you're not, we're not getting anywhere, and nobody's listening. So why come to a hearing like this? Just to hear, just to hear, see if there is a hope, a glimmer of hope somewhere that uh, may help us out. Because uh, this year, this year is going to be a deciding year um, for us um, as far as water. Because if we don't get any, if we don't get any, if we don't get any amount of water this year, there's going to be uh, going to be a lot of farmers just disappear. How tough has it been for you? Real tough. I, um, oh, out of out of a thousand acres, I've been farming 300 acres for uh, two years. So you figure that out. How you know you have to pay taxes, water assessments, everything on it. So uh, basically, basically, it's uh, you know pretty tough. Well, we hear this isn't so much of a party issue. Some people would say it is a very big partisan issue. Um, what? Do you think about the job that the federal government has done to help you guys on any level? Well, the federal government, they've kind of, you know, when, when uh, in, Interior, Secretary Interior comes out and says it's, it's, uh, it's the drought, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's not a political drought. He, he, he consists that it's not a political drought, but you and me know what we've seen in the last year. It's a political drought. I mean, last year there was enough water on a regular without the political uh, Endangered Species Act and all the, the biological opinions and everything, there would have been enough water for uh, 40, 45 percent water for us. And uh, matter of fact, this year, um, I hate to even say it, but I, I sold my ranch this year. So uh, out of 1,100 acres, I've got 100 and about 80 acres left. It's a sad state of affairs. It is. 
Uh, what would you like uh, people in Washington, D.C. to know about what you're going through? Well, the work part is the, the regular person, like the biological opinion, they talk about turbidity. How many people know what turbidity is? You know, turbidity is just that the water is dirty and the fish, I, basically what I understand is they can't see. And uh, so they have to stop the pumping of water to uh, fill a reservoir. And, and I, I, I don't understand how, how well, I don't know. It, it, it's frustrating for me because... Like I told somebody the other day, I might be the first one to go, but I probably won't be the last. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. I think they're about to do it next week, sir. Last year, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar admitted that the administration could turn the pumps back on and restore water deliveries to the Central Valley, but that it chose not to do it in order to indulge one of the environmental left's pet causes, has destroyed a half million acres of most productive farmland in America and thrown 30,000 Central Valley families. Trying to hold this hearing. Uh, for more than a year, uh, and unfortunately, like uh, Mr. McClintock said, uh, there was uh, the participation was uh, was I guess almost nil from the other side of the aisle. In fact, so much so, just to reiterate this, when Mr. McClintock announced this hearing, uh, they decided to hold a hearing on the very same day uh, down in Los Angeles. Uh, so when you know, as we all know, this is where the suffering really is. Uh, where the water crisis has really reached its pinnacle is here in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, this has been decades in the making. Uh, we've had the Endangered Species Act now in place for almost 40 years. Uh, in 1992, we had the Central Valley Project Improvement Act, which was also called the Miller-Bradley Bill. At that time, uh, this region was told that this would be the last time that they would have to give up water for the sake of the environment. That was in 1992. Uh, it wasn't but a few years uh, later that the lawsuits came uh, and there began this process of the San Joaquin River Settlement Act, uh, which took about two, a quarter million acre feet of water away from the east side of the valley. That water begins to, has already begun to go down uh, the river come February 1st. There's going to be a lot more water down the river. And then uh, with the with the followed by these biological opinions, first on the Delta smelt, and then followed by the uh, salmon killer whale biological opinion, we are now in a situation where uh, they are going, they're in a position to basically cut, take or cut off all the water from this region. And so everyone's going to fill this from Stockton to Bakersfield. It's not just going to be the, the farm workers and the farmers that are going to go broke. It's going to impact everyone's life here in the valley. Uh, agriculture is too important to this valley uh, to be ignored by Washington, D.C. politicians, and that's what this hearing is about. We're here to hear from you uh, and here to hear from the expert uh, witnesses, uh, and I really uh, want to thank my colleagues, especially Mr. Bishop, who came uh, in from another state today uh, for doing this, and of course, uh, our good friend Kevin McCarthy from Bakersfield and Tom McClintock from Northern California. Thank you. Thank you, Devin, and now I'd like to recognize our I just want to first appreciate all of you coming. And uh, I want to thank Tom McClintock for putting this on, and uh, especially Devin Nunes, the member Rob Bishop, who continues to fight for us and coming all the way out here to listen. And that's what we want to hear today. Um, I will tell you something I don't appreciate is Washington refusing to listen. Once again, by rejecting our invitation to participate, so this administration is just business as usual, providing lip service to the problems of this valley, giving hope but providing no change. And I want to thank, coming up today, Fred Starr, farmer in Bakersfield, representing many of my constituents down there, a director on the Kern County Water Agency yes. as well. The frustration that comes down to this is about jobs, yes. the economy that we're seeing. You go along the highway, we see the signs, foods grow where yes. water flows. Those signs could just as well say, jobs grow where water flow. Over 25 million Californians and thousands of acres of farmlands receive their water from the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta region. In Kern County alone, agriculture production has an annual gross production value of over four billion. This is a vital part of our economy, but water shortages continue to threaten our county and contribute to our double digit unemployment. The sad part here is that the sad part is here is that there are solutions, but they are being ignored. My colleagues and I have introduced and continue to ask for votes on bills and amendments that will help fix this man-made drought. 
But these bills die because Nancy Pelosi and her Democrats will not allow even an up and down vote on the floor. That is why, again, I want to thank Devin Nunes. He introduced a discharge petition for Turn on the Pumps Act to force a vote for the important legislation. So I thank you for coming today. We want to listen to you, but we want to get the message out. It's unfortunate that the administration, even though we leave a seat for them, Mr. McClintock gave more than a three-week notice first of the year that we would have this hearing. We no longer want lip service. We want change. Thank you. I look forward to the hearing. Thank you, Kevin.